What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we had another volatile day in the stock market with the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones closing in the green and the Nasdaq 100 slightly in the red. What should you expect in this choppy and whipsaw market? First up, let's take a look at the Nasdaq 100 NDX index. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so just a quick reminder, we're looking at the NDX instead of the triple Qs because the triple Qs did pay out that dividend, which is just enough to slightly affect the price action. So we saw with yesterday's close that we were very close to forming a lower low on the daily chart. With today's open, we opened below that support level and you can see that at the close, we did find resistance at that support level. So the way I interpret this price action is definitely bearish because we broke down below support and that support level did hold up as resistance. Now you can also see we're breaking down out of this wedge and we did break to the bear side and we are finding support right around 12,624. Now that level is about the same exact level on the triple Qs of about 30760. So that critical support level did hold up, but we're struggling to break above this resistance level, which is starting to form a lower low on the daily chart. Remember that lower lows are not bullish and lower highs mixed with lower lows define a bear market. Now the other thing I want you to point your eyes to is the trend and we do have the moving averages starting to slowly stack up to the bear side which means we're slowly but surely developing a bearish trend. Now, if you're looking at these moving averages, they still are in a chop zone because they're not all stacked to the bear side just yet. We still need the 13 EMA to cross below the 20, and then we will have the moving averages stacked to the bear side, and we will officially be in a bear trend. So right now, I'm still expecting a chop market, which means you're going to get whipsawed if you keep flipping between trades. Stay on the bull side or stay on the bear side, and then master your entries and exits. You're much better off timing a good support buy and a good resistance take profit, or if you're a bear, time a good short at a resistance and a good cover at a support level. Practice that and get in the rhythm of sound trading before you try to trade both sides of the trade. Either try to trade the long side or try to trade the short side and try to find what works for you. I posted this in the Stocks Channel Discord this morning, and if you wanna take a look at this, you can pause your video player but it helps you better understand on how you should be trading this choppy market. If you're a bear, you should be shorting at resistance and covering at support levels. And if you're a bull, you're looking to buy off support levels and sell at resistance. So you can pause your video player and you can look at these examples of bear trades and look at these examples of bull trades. And I would challenge you to go look at the chart and see if you would have captured those trades by looking at the price action. The more you practice this and the better you time your entries and exits, the more profitable you're going to remain in this market. So I'll likely be doing more trade ideas like this on the NASDAQ 100 every morning to help you better prepare for your mornings. I also do intraday updates every single hour to help you better understand which direction the market's going and how support and resistance levels are building up throughout the day. But right now, there's definitely slowly but surely building a bearish bias in the NASDAQ 100 because we are having bearish price action. We know that because we closed below all the moving averages for two days in a row now. And all of these moving averages are also slowly but surely trending to the bear side. So let's jump over to the triple Qs and break down the price action on the triple Qs. Remember on this market, if you haven't caught up on my videos yet, below 30760, it's a full bear market and above 324, we're a full bull market. So above 324 breakout, this market's going full bull. And if we break down below 30760, we're going full bear. Anywhere between 307 and 324 is going to remain a chop zone. As you can tell from the trend, we're really just going sideways and we're switching from price action closing bullish to price action closing bearish. That's the definition of a whipsaw. So the strongest support level is still down here at 30760 and you could see intraday that we did bounce off that level and we came all the way back above the support level at 310. So that was a great buying opportunity. And if you're on the Stocks Channel Discord, I did call out that as a possible trade from 307 to 310. Now, as you can tell from the close, we did close above 310, but below 313. Remember that 313 is also a very critical level because below 313, it increases the bearish probabilities that the price action and the trend are gonna go bearish. Above 313 increases the probabilities that the price action and the trend will go bullish. Remember, that's the middle grounds between 307 and 324. And while it's not dead in the middle, that's the battleground resistance and support level that the bears and the bulls are struggling the most. So right now the bulls are struggling to break above that level 
and above that level, we'll be looking for the bears to struggle to break below that level. The 20 simple moving average is now sitting right around 314. And remember that bearish price action is when we're closing below the 20 and the 50. And bullish price action means we're closing above the 20 and the 50. So in order to get bullish price action, we actually need to start closing back above 316. That's quite a ways away from where we closed around 311. So the bulls still have a lot of work to do and a lot of resistance levels to break through to get back above that level. So when you're looking at the triple Qs, it's definitely favoring the bearish scenario because we're very close to the critical support level breakdown at 307.60. If the price action starts breaking down below 307.60, we're looking to come back to retest the lows around 300 and 297. So this is a very critical moment for the bulls to remain above the support level. And if we do start closing below the support level, it's going to be an absolute bear raid on the NASDAQ 100. So from where we close today, you're looking at support levels at 310 and 30760. And resistance levels are going to be 313, 316. And if we can somehow break above 316, we still need to get all the way back above 324. Next up is the S&P 500 SPY ETF. And we saw the S&P 500 also having a very volatile day. Remember that the critical support level on the S&P 500 was 384 and we did test that level today and we did get a confirmation bounce. We got a little bit lower than the support level below 384 and then we started to see a lot of buyers step in and we closed all the way back above the 20 simple moving average right around 389.70. So the SPY went up about 0.56% today and it did close below the 5 EMA and below that resistance level at 390. Now looking at this price action, it's not bearish just yet because we're still above the 50 and we're still above the 20. You do see that the 5 EMA has crossed below the 13 EMA, so we're no longer in a strong bull trend and we're no longer in a bear trend. So this market is still fitting that chop zone territory where we're expecting the market to just sort of chop around until we can build some sort of trend. So the bulls need to break back above 390 and start building up some bullish momentum to break through 394. And the bears are looking to break back below 388 and try to come down and break the 50 EMA at 384. So the critical levels I want you to watch on SPY is below 384, we're going to be bearish, and above 390, we're looking to be bullish. Anywhere between 384 and 390 is going to remain a chop zone, and the market is just sort of going to go nowhere and try to confuse as many bears and bulls alike. Remember, if you're not doing well trading this market, or you're flip-flopping and you're on the wrong side of the trade each and every time, you might want to consider joining the Stocks Channel Discord to help you stay on the right side of the trade. The other option is just don't do anything and wait for a trend to return to this market so that it's going to be a lot easier for you to identify the trend and stay on the right side of the market. Next up is the Dow Jones ETF and we saw the Dow going up 0.65% and the Dow's price action is looking very good because we're still closing over all of the moving averages. The Dow Jones does still have a bullish trend and the price action is also bullish with all these moving averages stacked to the bull side and they're all positive sloping. The price action closed above the 5 EMA and we have resistance just above at 327. If we can break and close over 327, the Dow Jones resistance above that is going to be right around $330, which is the previous all time high. So with the bull trend and the bull price action, the Dow Jones is still favoring getting back up to my price target towards 336, but we will have to break through two resistance levels on the way there. Downside support is the 20 simple at 322 and just below there we have another support level around 320. For the Dow to start looking bearish, we would need to break down below 322 and possibly retest the 50 EMA down at 316. But right now it looks like the Dow bulls are still fully in control and we don't see any weakness in the Dow Jones just yet. Next up is the Russell 2000 ETF and we saw the Russell going up 2.18% today but still looking relatively bearish when you look at the chart. We're down below the 50 EMA. And we did see the 50 EMA, which is now around 217.50 acting as resistance, and we failed to close above it. The moving averages are starting to slowly but surely build up bearish momentum, and the 5 EMA has crossed below the 13 and below the 20, and it looks like it's getting ready to cross below the 50. So the price action is bearish and the trend is developing bearish, but you would still expect to see the Russell 2000 chopping around until we can get a decisive trend. Right now, we're not decisively trending in the bearish direction or the bullish direction, but we are currently holding up below all of the resistance levels that are critical. So I'm still looking for the Russell 2000 to possibly retest my trend line down around 205. That should be a strong support level because that was the resistance trend line breakout that I did show in Sunday's episode. So the Russell 2000 was way too far extended on the monthly chart and it needed to cool off and it's still likely going through a correction until we retest that trend line around 205. 
If that trend line does break down, it's possible we do come close the gap around 197. Upside critical resistance is going to be the 50 EMA at 217.50. And just above there, we have the 20 simple moving average around 223.50. On the RK ETF, we still see that Kathy Wood is having a bad time, but we are starting to see less selling in ARK finally. We only went down about 0.31%, but that's still a red day and we're still on a bear trend with bearish price action. The price action is closing below all of the moving averages and we're in a decisive bear trend with all of the moving averages stacked to the bear side. So when you're in a very strong bear trend, you don't want to get overly bullish, but we are still holding up above that support level, which is right around 113. If 113 breaks down, we're looking for possible support at 105. Upside resistance is going to be right around 118 and the 20 simple moving average at 123. Remember not to get overly bullish on ARK ETFs until we get bullish price action and we would get a bullish trend return to this market. On the VIX, which is our fear indicator, we went down over 6.5% today and the VIX did close below that support level at 20, which is a bullish indication. Remember that this is a measurement of fear. And if fear is going lower, that means market participants are getting more bullish and they're expecting the market to go higher. So the VIX below 20 is a great sign. And you can see intraday that the VIX was all the way up here at 23.5. So we saw that spike in volatility and we gave it all back as the market rallied and recovered. So watch the VIX very closely because if it does start getting back up to 25, we'll know that we're likely going into a deeper volatile correction. But if the VIX can't break above 21.6 and remain above that level, we're not likely going to see the selling accelerate. When the VIX is below 20, we're likely to see less volatility in a more stable market. On gold, we're still going sideways and it looks like we're slowly but surely trying to build up a support level right around 1726. The price target is still above at 1761. Downside support is down here at 1686. On silver, we're still hanging around that support level right around $25. And if that level does break down, we could come all the way back down to 2350. Upside resistance is going to be the 50 EMA at 26 and our price target, which is 2650. On Bitcoin, we did get a confirmation break below that support trend line and we did find support at the 50 EMA today and we did get a confirmation bounce. Now that is bullish and bearish in the same breath because while we did hold up above critical support, we're also breaking down below other support levels simultaneously. So we're slowly but surely developing some bearish trending, but the price action is holding up above the 50 EMA. Remember that if $50,000 on Bitcoin does break down, we're going to see a huge waterfall of selling and we're likely going to see Bitcoin go through a crash and a correction. Now, if Bitcoin can hold up above 50,000 and build some sort of support level here and sort of trade sideways for a little while, it could start heading back up towards my price target at 62,500. But as long as Bitcoin is below these support levels, which are right around 55,000, it's not bullish. And remember that it got way too far extended and it's due for a correction. So trade accordingly and remember that there's limited upside for a huge potential downside risk. On Amazon stock, we went down 1.32% today, closing back below the 20 simple moving average, but we are holding up above support at 3033. If this support level does break down, we're looking for the next leg lower around 29.52. Upside resistance is still 3090 and the 50 EMA at 3140. On Tesla stock, we went up 1.61% today, but we're still in a bear market. The price action is still closing below all of the moving averages, and all of the moving averages are stacked to the bear side, with the 13 EMA getting ready to cross below the 20. Remember that this defines a bear market, so you don't want to be bullish on Tesla just yet. Downside support was 618, and we did see that level holding up today. But if we break below 618, we could come all the way back down to 550. Upside resistance is the 20 simple moving average at 662 and the 50 EMA, which is now right around $700. Remember that Tesla needs to break back above the 50 EMA and also form a daily higher high above 718. You can't get bullish on Tesla until we get the confirmation bullish price action with the bullish trend. On Apple stock, we went up 0.42% today and we closed just above support level at 120. Downside support levels are still 120 and down here around 116. Upside resistance is going to be 122, 123 and the 50 EMA, which is now at 125. Remember that Apple is still on a bear trend and we still have bearish price action. We need to get back above the 50 EMA at 125 before we can get bullish on Apple stock. On the financial sector, we went up 1.68% today and we closed right above all of the moving averages. We're slowly but surely trying to regain that bullish support and regain that bullish trend. We still have some work to do for the financial bulls. And if we fail to hold up above this resistance level, we're likely coming down to retest the 50 EMA. On the industrials, we went up 1.60% today, 
and we're still maintaining that bull trend with this bullish price action. All the moving averages are still stacked to the bull side, and we successfully bounced off that support level at the 20 simple moving average. On the energy sector, we went up 0.37% today, but we're still looking like we need to cool off. We're failing to break above the 5 EMA, the moving averages are starting to build up some bearish momentum, and we still have yet to retest support at the 50 EMA. On the healthcare sector, we went up 0.42% today, and we continue to maintain this bullish trend building up momentum, and the bullish price action is still closing above all the moving averages. So it does look like the healthcare sector is slowly but surely getting ready to go back into a bull rally, which is bullish for the S&P 500. So going back to the S&P 500, you can still see that we have some weakness in the tech sector, but we are starting to see some strength return to the healthcare sector. Financials, industrials, and energy are still holding up, and in the grand scheme of this market, there's still reason to believe that there's upside left in this market. We still haven't seen the other sectors breaking down and going into bear trends just yet, and if the tech sector can get back into a bull rally, it's really gonna push the S&P 500 to higher prices. We saw the VIX closing below that 20 support level, which means that fear is slowly but surely leaving this market, and we're getting ready to go into April, which is gonna be a brand new month, and we're coming out of this tech correction, we could go back into a bull rally. But be patient and be disciplined, and follow that critical support level and that critical resistance level that I gave you on the NASDAQ 100. If you're not sure what to do, it's always okay to sit on the sidelines and wait for a decisive trend to return to this market. Sometimes the best trade is making no trade at all. Also remember on the Stocks Channel Discord, I'm giving intraday updates and trade ideas each and every week. If you're interested in the Stocks Channel Discord trading community, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of the video. So next up, let's look at our trade idea, which is still Shopify. And we did see Shopify getting sold off with the tech sector today, going down 4%. Shopify is getting ready now to hit that last buy target, which is down here at 1035. If we start breaking down below that level, Shopify will no longer be a trade idea and it's time to move on. However, this could be the best buying opportunity for Shopify to buy it low before it starts running up through our price targets. So if you can get Shopify at 1035, you're looking to take profits at all of these levels above at 1080, 1111, and 1134. Now if Shopify breaks down through support and starts continuing to head lower, it's time to cut bait and take the loss and move on. So thanks for watching everybody. Remember to stay disciplined and patient in this volatile and choppy market and don't get whipsawed. So good luck out there and as always, I will see you in the next episode.